Hi guys, I'm Jacques Chassé, the owner of Eskif International. Back in 97, I had no idea at that time that Eskif will become a company and a kind of manufacturer. The project was only to build maybe 10 boats for me and my friends to bring the family out, uh, exploring the Quebec and Canadian River, um, canoe camping, you know, smooth approach, bringing the kids to nature and uh, trying to show them uh, what, it, what it can be out on the river. Back in 97, the boats that were used to run rapids or uh, river runner or canoe camping were either out of, made out of composite uh, fiberglass boat or there was some, some more advanced paddler uh, using Royal X boat. They were all made out of Royal X, the, 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 the crazy guy that you met on river running class two, three, uh, jumping little waterfall. They were, all the boats that they were using were made in uh, Royal X. They were all made in USA at that time. There was no Canadian manufacturer using uh, Royal X at that time. So it, it kind of uh, turned me on. I said, well, you know, we should make some over here. So I started the project designing a boat and then I have had to decide, okay, need a mold, but it's not a mold for composite. How thermoforming is done? I didn't know at that time. So, just started to read everything about thermoforming, about plastic, about equipment. And, you know, it, it was a little scary at that time because the company that were using Royal X uh, were a huge corporation, you know, with uh, large facility, uh, big equipment. So, so, it was a little scary. But then, digging a little more, you know, it was... It wasn't that tricky, it was a simple thing, you know, it was an oven. Of course it's a 21 feet long oven and it's 6 feet wide, but it's just an oven. It's a convection okay, oven, okay? Convection oven, you need to move air, hot air, warm air, you know, to make sure that you won't damage the railing sheet. So, okay, let's make an oven. So we... I started building an oven from scratch, you know, using ventilation dock at that time and uh, and uh, recycling old furnace heater and stuff like that, you know, trying to be creative, working on a low budget. It's probably what pushed us to learn more about thermoforming and understanding better, you know, because we built all our equipment ourselves, or I should say myself at that time. We learned thermoform boat, you know, the hard way, you, you, you know, start buying like 20 sheets the first time and, uh, and um, probably being able to thermoform five or six canoe, let's say, okay canoe at that time, you know, it was the beginning of everything, trying to understand what affect this, what is, why is that, and, you know, trying to tune equipment that were not designed for that, we never saw any Royal X plan at that time, so. And then we learn about Royal X. We, and we develop our own technique and we, I believe, understand pretty well what was the reaction of the material for stretching and all that. So, and because we were such a small company, in fact, it wasn't a company at that time. It was just out of a garage. So it's a, it, it, the Royal X sheet at that time was was gold for us. It was quite an investment. You know, the, each seat of Royal X at that time worth like 400 bucks. So it was, wow, it's a lot of money. You can't miss that one, but it's, it's part of the learning curve. So we became over the year a good thermoformer and uh, we get some good result. And uh, we were proud to say that 98% of the sheet we were thermoforming were, were for first quality boats. So.
And after, after like 20 years of uh, operation, then um, the company, the corporation that owned the company producing Royal X at that time, Polywon, they, they bought it, they bought Royal X from Spartak, they bought Spartak entirely. And then starting to shut down plan, you know, identifying which, what was their, uh, what would become their profit center. So uh, they shut down many, many plants at that time. And the Royal X factory in Warsaw, Indiana was one of them. So, so we received a letter saying that in six months, they're gonna cease the production of Royal X. Unfortunately for Eskif at that time, 90% of our boat were made out of Royal X. The entire factory was built over there. All the tooling equipment, Everything was designed to make Royal X canoe. When we received that letter, it was a brutal shock. You know, it's uh, okay, what do we do now? Uh, we were not a composite company. We were not making, uh, we were selling a few composite units, but they were not made in our facility. We, we, we I never wanted to, work with composite in the factory it was a personal choice um, so i started to think yeah well there's no more royal x but we know royal x we've been working with it since 17 18 years so so we know we know what we want we know what we need so i decided to start a project to recreate what was royal x without knowing what composite was used in that and so I started to learn a lot about plastic at that time and it took me I would say about two years three years to put together the first uh, look-alike sheet look-alike Royal X sheets you know that I call T4 Max it's it's it was designed, T4MAX was designed to replace Royal X and trying to improve some, some of the uh, flaw of Royal X like the scratch resistance and the, uh, the uh, gloss of the finish and um, different things, characteristics that uh, I, would, uh, I would prefer to see uh, differently than what Royal X was presenting. So after three, three years of research and trial and error, and uh, we finally came out, came up with the uh, T4MAX solution. As I said, when I was uh, telling the story of the beginning of Eskif in 97, you know, we were, uh, it, it wasn't a business plan. It was just uh, a sideline, you know. And, 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 and like people like to work in a garage and create something for me it was the challenge was there but you know to to achieve it and to I did invest much more than I expected so so at some point I did the math and I have had to recover my investment and for that I decided that it, it's time to sell boats instead of giving them to my friends so in fact my friends bought the first first couple of boats that I produced because I needed gas in the tank but uh, it's um, we soon real I soon realized that I had to sell boats to store and to uh, um, specialized shop so I started uh, touring the uh, Quebec paddle shop at that time and uh, attending to different festival and then learning more about canoe, canoe shape, uh, um, watching canoes on the river, um, paddling solo boats myself and stuff like that. And it, 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 we start understanding how our boat react on water and uh, looking at the uh, traditional canoe business where a 16 feet canoe was able to do everything. You know, they, at that time we were, looking to uh, specialize or small niche canoe um, it was a business decision not not making the exact 16 as everybody every manufacturer were producing but trying to be 
uh, produce short series of small boat, you know, for a shorter boat or a deeper boat, uh, or river oriented boat, lake, flat water boat, um, canoe camping, canoe. Uh, so we started to dig and all that and, and trying to see where the market was going and realizing that the time of owning one canoe uh, to do everything um, was past and the people were looking for a different option, you know, for fun, the fun factor. Uh, people were starting surfing waves on the river. So there was different, uh, the market was uh, showing us that they, we need to diversify type of canoe uh, if we want to succeed. And knocking at the door of a new store with the same exact 16 feet canoe as others wasn't really um, helping to get in the store. So uh, we started having uh, um, and designing different shape of boat, trying to be more creative and uh, different than others. As you all know, you know we're facing the same challenge in uh, 2020. Everybody is our own, hopefully safe, healthy, um, trying to just figure out how we're going to reopen business and how we're going to deliver our boats. But we were ready, you know, when we shut down the factory, uh, according to the authority request, there was, the factory was full of boats and raw component to produce boats. So uh, we're just ready. We just adjust our factory, you know, um, installing new sanitation station, um, plexiglass protecting people. We know at Eskif that our operation is safe for our employees, customer, the way we deliver a canoe, uh, protecting ourselves, uh, wearing gloves, mask, shield, mask, face, face shield. Um, we are trying to protect our staff, ourselves, our customer at our best uh, with the new indication, you know, it, it, it changed every day, but uh, we are more than ready to reopen and uh, we got to bring, bring you our products, guys. Yeah, Skiff International is very pleased to work with uh, Lancaster County Marine. They, were, they are one of our uh, most active uh, retailer in USA. They carry all the line and they are prompt to answer and the uh, um, from white water to canoe camping uh, to more adventurous long adventure uh, trip or expedition you can get everything you need uh, to outfit your skiff canoe there they will answer you promptly uh, they got the boat in stock um, they are very reliable and uh, and it's it's a, it's, it's a family-owned business as a skiff, so it's uh, there's a good connection and relation with them. And you won't be disappointed if you're shopping for an skiff. It's a place to go.